Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 184, and today we are talking about what makes a good online teacher. Uh, Now, due to our current situation, there are a lot of students and teachers who have moved everything online, and uh, today we're going to discuss some of the qualities and characteristics of what uh, you should need if you are thinking about becoming an online teacher or if you uh, aren't thinking about it, but you have been forced to become an online teacher. So stay tuned, keep your ears open and ready to learn because we're going to have lots of uh, exciting uh, tips and tidbits for you today. So my man with the plan, my good buddy, Jared, what's going on, Jared? Hello. Yeah, welcome. Uh, Chad conveniently also forgot to mention that his current job is online teacher. That's probably nice to know for the people. Um, welcome. We are uh, here in the quarantine. Qu- quarantine. All these other podcasts have adopted to this uh, self-isolation quarantine lifestyle. The Untranslatable podcast, we were born in it, molded by it. <laughs> this is what we've trained for. And um, it's sad that I can't see Chad, but uh, it's good to be here. And uh, please spread a little love. Follow us on Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast. Twitter, Untranslatable One, the number one. Um, <laughs> you really have nothing better to do. That's the thing. And That's if you fair. do, hats off to you. You're probably that means you're doing something admirable and something very useful to society. Respect uh, to you. But that's not the majority of people in this world. It's not me. I'm still working, but uh, they can send my my ass home. They're like, you know, we could have done this the whole time. We just didn't feel like it. <laughs> uh, Michigan right. currently, the state that we live in, is in a state of emergency. Yep. Is this Stay your home first state and of emergency? Yes. Uh, is this your first state of emergency for three weeks? By the way, which is a long time. Yep. Yep. Um. I think so. I think this is... I don't know if there have been other state of emergencies. <laughs> None like this. That's for sure, Jared. None like yeah. this. Sure. Sure. Um, you know what I have that I always... That always makes me feel better is social media. Now, please tell me you saw Gal Gadot's video. Imagine where she oh, was... Oh, God. It's so had, cringeworthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, it wasn't her video by any means that... Um, <laughs> made me feel better but it was the internet's reaction to it oh, of course and how they destroyed her so essentially what it was was just her and she was talking about how oh this time is so tough it's crazy out there self-quarantine blah blah blah, blah. and then so she starts singing the song imagine by uh by john one lennon of those beatles john lennon and yep. um yeah, by Ringo Lennon and uh, <laughs> Paul Harrison. Uh, I'm, <laughs> or I'm hoping to get some real angry people at us. That's how we're going to really grow this thing. Forget the five-star reviews. No, don't forget the five-star reviews. <laughs> love, love. Um, anyway, uh, so she started singing the song, Imagine There's No Whatever. I don't remember. the. I don't know the exact words. There's No People. Imagine, Imagine There's, there's No, no Countries. Imagine There's No People. Uh, okay. Yeah. Who knows? Anyway, but after she sings the first line, she passes it on to one of her other famous friends who passes along to another famous friend until they go through the whole song. Mm-hmm. And um, now I, 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 I had no interest in it, mm-hmm. but my first reaction certainly wasn't the level of roasting uh, that <laughs> happened. But I think that... And you are a pretty good that, roaster, Jared, that's for sure. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Thank you. I think... Um, <laughs> I think uh, people are just having different reactions to this. I- I'm really enjoying people's reactions because I think it's really sharpening people's internet game. People oh, are stuck sure. inside. You're seeing the weirdest of people. And I think that this is also bringing out the um, the um, the uh, throwing shade game has really been oh, stepped for up. Sure. And I think just any sort of thing that's sort of slightly bad, they're just like, all right, let's rip this up. Like um <clears throat> like that when they went to town on uh uh what what's the um the high school musical um Vanessa Hudgens oh for the for the moan thing right for the moan thing do you, I don't know what that is do you not know what I'm talking about <laughs> but that sounds way better than what there's I'm thinking all right about. hold up hold up let me see if I I th- maybe it wasn't I don't think it was Vanessa Hudgens it was uh um what I, 
Hold up. Oh, Madonna. Yes. Now that was... <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that was. That was hilarious, too. Vanessa Hudgens just had a video talking about, like, I know this is bad, but, like, it's going to be... It'll be over soon. And it's just, like, I know a few people will die, but, like, isn't that kind of inevitable? And um, it was just stupid. She was just saying it was just real stupid and not and kind of tone deaf. And it's just like that's very privileged for a young rich person to say. Um, oh yeah, <clears throat> people it, was, it, it was it was Vanessa Hudgens. Yeah. So it's, what it's you're a, talking about is Madonna, a, and a that's meme, way better. It's a meme thing. It's a meme thing here. Uh, Vanessa oh, Hudgens. Oh. Yeah, it's like a popular meme thing. Anyways, speaking of being well, stuck Madonna at home, had something that she just came out with recently. Okay. That was she was in her bathtub, and she like remixed uh, one of her songs uh, to be like I think coronavirus based or co- self quarantine based. Uh, it's a scary time. I, have you? Is. Didn't have Neil you Diamond any... also do something like that? Because he has the song Sweet Caroline where it's like hands oh, did he? touching hands. Oh, I, I think he did. This. I think he did. Oh, yeah. No. And I've noticed also that um, Weird Al Yankovic has refused to yep. get on board. I saw that too. <laughs> he Someone tweeted at him early on before it was even a pandemic. And he, he, he said, oh yeah, he said, no, I will not be doing my Corona for my Sharona. Yeah. My, 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 I respect my Corona. I respect it. There's no reason too. to. I do too. Like it's kind of gross to profit off of. Uh, oh, a but pandemic. there are a lot of people that are trying, Jared. That's for there sure. There are, and actually, um, you know the coronavirus Cardi B thing. Coronavirus. I'm sure <laughs> you've heard that. <laughs> um, oh yeah. I'm bummed uh, you don't have that I, I, as a drop, Jared. I'm a little bummed. I could easily pull it up. I mean, it's 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 very I popular. Should. I think you definitely should. Corona. Corona Cardi. Cardi B. There, and there's like remix songs and oh, essentially um well that's oh, the thing Jared, a, a lot of people now have oh, this too much wrong. time on their hands too so you know the internet's going to deliver now oh yeah i mean of course uh, have you noticed any signs of uh yourself personally dare i say showing any signs of insanity oh all the time all sorts of insane. No, I don't. I don't, I don't mean. I don't mean just in general. I mean during this <laughs> quarantine. Any more specific signs that you're like, I need to. I need to be social or I need to get out because I definitely have noticed that me and my girlfriend we yell more and not even. Let me be clear. Really, we're not arguing. Hey, N- not arguing. <clears throat> we're not arguing. It's just like just random like woo or like oh, oh nice. it was like or like I don't know. It's just a, Did a you lot of just Rick like Flair? Um, what happened. A lot of singing. I've had a lot of TikToks, TikTok, so, TikTok songs stuck in my head. Like the um, speed um, of which, where's that Cardi B coronavirus? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will say this I'm, though, I'm Jared. Trying, uh, I'm trying to spill my soul to you about my uh, slow, slow, slowly forming insanity, and you're looking for a meme. That's right. I be- can't get enough of those memes, Jared. But anyways. Um, I did go on a drive yesterday because I got the I got the notice that Michigan was going on a you know lockdown basically for three weeks, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to drive around Dexter for a bit. So I was driving around Dexter for a while, but no sights of insanity just yet. But we got we got like two and a half more weeks of this thing, so we'll see. Is um, are so. You're not allowed to drive around during the uh, stay-at-home thing, even if you don't get out of I th- your car. I think probably I would assume you can. You're only allowed to drive if you're like going for like essential stuff, some medication, mm. grocery shopping, things like that. I don't okay. know. See, that's the thing with this entire predicament, Jared. Is everything is so new and we just don't know. Yeah, Chad. This is way too early in the episode. It's getting it's getting heated. Let's just let's just have a quick break here and enjoy the uh, DJ Snake Cardi oh, B coronavirus remix. All right, let's hear it. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> coronavirus! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Donc j'ai isolé le rire de Cardi. Oh, they're showing him. Oh, it's in French too. This is him making it. <laughs> Very untranslatable podcasty with that. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Multi. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> oh my god! So yeah, that's the uh, that's the. Um, oh dear lord! Was she, she was she was talking about she she had a uh, she had a video where she was um like she was like I don't know this is really scary. And she there was just a video of her uh, saying that it was scary, and then um, uh, she yelled at. She's like, uh, at, "I could let me see if I can just pull it up for you." I don't have, I don't follow follow Cardi B on Instagram. I'm sorry, mm. everyone. Was it Cardi B so, or was it a different female rapper that uh, was was saying that coronavirus was celebrities were being paid to lie, saying they were having coronavirus? Did you hear about this? That sounds like something. Um, Alex Jones would say that's that is very <laughs> true, very very true. The Democrats are paying celebrities to lie about having the coronavirus. It does not exist. It's <laughs> yeah, a conspiracy it's from the left wing. <clears throat> yeah, crazy conspiracy. Sorry, it hurts my voice to speak like him. I haven't smoked enough cigars, nearly <laughs> enough cigars to do that. Oh, here it is. So here, here's the original for you. Oh, I don't know uh, what the fuck this well, coronavirus is about. I don't understand how that shit was from Wuhan, China. Now all of a sudden this shit is a motherfucking tour. And let me tell y'all something. I ain't even gonna front. A bitch is scared. I'm a little scared. <laughs> like uh, shit, shit got me panicking. And a lot of you motherfuckers think it's a joke. Like I was thinking, right? <laughs> but that shit right there, just because you think you immune to it, guess what? Your pocket ain't bitch, because a lot of shit comes from motherfucking China, bitch. So if you wonder where your motherfucking weave or your fashion over motherfucking packages have arrived, guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus! Oh my Coronavirus! God. I'm telling you, shit oh, is real! Man. <laughs> there Crazy. you go. Shit is Crazy real. Ridiculous. According to Cardi Man. B. Um, there all right, you go. Chad, do you want to um, spread a little love? I do, Jared. You know, I do. I tried really hard to find non coronavirus based shout outs today. It's almost impossible, mm. man. All the positive news. That's the only news, thing that's happening exactly. in the world right now. Exactly. So, Jared, I do have a couple that are coronavirus themed my first one goes out to our brothers and sisters up north (laughs) the canadians because there are three major canadian grocery stores that have given the workers a raise during the covid19 pandemic uh which i think is whole foods by the way did they really okay yeah yeah my girlfriend's sister works at whole foods and i think she got like a two dollar raise i think okay an hour okay so, yeah, so I think that's really great of, uh, I'm trying to find the the names, but I, ah, Metro Inc. is one of them uh, that uh, is one of the grocery stores doing this as well. Uh, Empire as well that runs Sobeys, IGA, and Safeway launched a temporary hero pay program giving workers an additional 50 bucks a week. Uh, all those people who work more than 20 hours will receive an additional $2 premium for every hour they work. These arrangements are ro- retroactive to March 8th, and employees will get their first payments in early in April. Um, so I think that's fantastic. Um, that Grocery store workers, definitely, I'm sure 99% of them did not sign up with the intention of being at the front line nope. of the pandemic. And one of the definitely most not. necessary resources in society right now i mean it's always necessary everyone goes to the grocery store Mm -hmm. but now it's like this is all that we need to have open and we need you guys to stay open in spite of the pandemic that everyone's aware of right oh absolutely you know jared and one country that's obviously been hit very very hard by this virus has been italy and uh giorgio armani and 19 other italian billionaires donate more than 44 million dollars to fight coronavirus in italy which i think is fantastic mm-hmm. i think that is awesome um that a lot of these you people betcha. are uh trying to help out in such a desperate and difficult time right now um so i think that's great so anyway sending lots of love to the canadian yeah. supermarkets also whole foods as well in the states for uh giving their workers better pay um and also for uh the it- rich italian billionaires like giorgio armani uh <laughs> donating a large sum of money to fight coronavirus as well so those are my I, shout outs for I today have, jared mm-hmm. i have two grocery stores that i go to and now well not two grocery stores. i have a bunch of grocery stores that i go to but now in the in these times i've essentially reverted to two 
Okay. And that's because one of them delivers, and oh, the nice. other one you can order online, and they'll do uh, curbside pickup, so you can just like pop oh, your perfect. trunk and they'll yeah, put it in your trunk. Yeah, that's really um, good. But Jared, I and think so I, I, I missed going to the grocery stores mm, though. That's fair. I don't blame you. Hopefully, if we all do this social distancing and we're careful, we can go back to them sometime soon. But in the time being, Jared, I think it's time for some untranslatables. What do you think? Yes, I agree. I agree. Mind if I get That's us started what today, looking Jared? For in, this, in these times, please. That's true. And for our listeners who are unaware, and if this is your first time on an untranslatable endeavor, untranslatables are idioms, phrases, axioms that cannot be directly translated into English. And my first one for you today, yes. Jared, is Japanese, and it is manaita no ui no koi, and it means carp on a chopping board. Carp on a chopping board, or it's like you're getting grilled. You know, it's like when you're being interrogated and they have the light right in your face and it's like uh, you're you're something's on the line, you know, mm, you're you're close, but still no cigar. Or it's like you're putting someone's feet to the fire. You know, it's like you're it's like you're a politician's on stage and you're really like, listen, mm. I need or you're a journalist and you're looking for the scoop. Not quite. We, we have an English oh. untranslatable with wah, wah. a duck. We say that person is a blank duck. Oh, a um, uh, uh, ugly duckling? Mm -mm. Nope. Blank duck. Lame duck? Nope. A sitting duck. Sitting duck. Mm -hmm. Is that someone that's just like left out uh, on their own with no help? A vulnerable target. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, so it's just like, okay, you're just vulnerable because you're a fish on a a shopping board. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you about to get mm-hmm. chopped. Ooh, great watch show out. to watch during the. Uh, oh, oh we should talk nice. about not right now, but in the future uh, shows that you've been binging. Oh, um, good idea. Although I've been playing time. PlayStation, we'll the I haven't been binging very much. But we can talk. about Oh it. right, okay. Uh, my first untranslatable is Danish, and it's der er ingen pa isen. There is no cow on the ice. It means like everything's good. Very good. Ooh, all right. All right. I don't know why, Jared, but I was just in a Japanese mood. Uh, mm. And so I got uh, two more Japanese ones for you. My first one for you is, or my second one, sorry, is Mimini Tako Gadigiru. And it means. I'm growing calluses in my ear. Is this like you're getting sick of listening to someone? Someone's, Very good. Uh, Hit that ham horn. Very good. Yeah, that just, that just, I don't know how that came to me so quickly. Which you, could? you got to be careful when you teach <laughs> online lessons, Jared. You got to be careful. Uh, yeah. Uh, my next one's Hungarian. So I'm mm-hmm. definitely saying this wrong. Not that I said the Danish one correctly. Abeka feneka sega alat van. It is below the ass of a frog. So finka, feneka, and sega is either ass or bottom. It's either like finka, okay. feneka slash sega is really what it is, or bottom okay. slash ass. But I just shortened okay. it, but then I made it long again. It is <laughs> below the ass of a frog. It's like the lowest of the low. Lowest of the low what? Like like it's just like classless, like terrible, awful, ridiculous. I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to give that to you. Nice. Now, what it says here is quality of something is very bad, but that could be the quality oh, okay. of someone's character. True. <laughs> That's a good point, Jared. Very good point. Very, very good point. My next one is My- Japanese. Oh, right. right, right Again. Right. Sorry, I forgot that I just went. And it is excited. Neko no te mokaritai. And it means borrowing wow, a well. cat's paw. Uh, oh, it's just like, hey, give me a hand. Yeah, very good. Very, very good. I have a lot of free time on my hands. I've been practicing. <laughs> I've been meditating, and I, I just sit tell. there, and I just think about untranslatables, you know. Slipping on gator piss. My next one is Luxembourgish. Do you know what Luxembourgish would, would sound like? 
probably kind of like Flemish. I guess so. Yeah, my guess would be like Germanish, but okay. yeah. German and Flemish are similar. Du bas nach Greng hanet den Uren. Something about the clocks. Uren. Either clocks or ears. 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 Okay. What is it? Du bas. So you are nach. You are after. Nach you are night. Gleng. I don't know what that is. Yeah, no, I don't, you wouldn't know what that is because I'm looking at what it is, and that's Hanet den. So, uh, yeah, you're right. You are is correct, and mm -hmm. obviously ears. So it's you are still green between the ears. So Gleng is oh, green. Oh, green. I guess. Oh, cool. Okay, green between the ears. You're still you're green jealous. between you're the envious. ears. Uh oh no 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 think of no that's a good guess okay but, um, okay because <clears throat> I thought that was right for a second but it's it's not it's not that it's it's more like um I think this we might have something similar to this in English and it means the same thing to have um, a green thumb it's like th someone who is very green behind your ears so think about a fruit maybe you know a fruit Apples? at the tips. It's you know no think of even like a banana it could be it could be yellow but it, you could tell it's still a little you can see quite the what green. they seem no. no I have no idea uh, do you know anything do you know how bananas work so you know what the green of a banana means mm -hmm. it's ripe it's too ripe yeah so you're still green behind your ears kind of oh, like a banana you're, you're a youngin half ham horn. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'll accept Someone it. Someone who is very naive and acts like a child. Ah, okay. That makes sense. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Or you could think like naive, like, you know, like in the game, maybe. Right. You know, like new to the game is right. also how I kind of think of it. That's fair. Well, Jared, you know who can't be naive is online teachers. <clears throat> that is for sure. Because uh, <laughs> there's a lot of extra work and extra things that goes into teaching online. Um, and I've seen a lot of really funny memes um, that were like... Uh, when the teacher asks how to make the video work and the one uh, brave student says press Alt F4, which would make the window close. Um, mm. So there's all sorts of... Did you know that? Oh, you've yeah. Heard, you've I've, heard of I've Alt F4 that before? Oh, yeah. I've done okay. that trick before. You know, you never know. Kids you. aren't going to be tricking <laughs> me with that, Jared. Let me come to my um, own classes with that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean... So you are, uh, you've started online teaching mm -hmm. children mostly. Yes, correct. Do you have the, uh, how many classes have you done? How long have you been doing it? And how many, like how often do you do it? So, well, right now I have a couple private students that are in Russia. Um, and they are, I have uh, five of them. So five classes mm -hmm. a week. Uh, one well, an academic hour, so forty-five minutes per lesson, uh, and uh, each student is once a week. And it's the same students consistently. Correct. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So how do they time it up where they could get you? Yeah, that doesn't make that doesn't matter. I can understand how they could do that. Um, just so you know, Chad, mm -hmm. I know you, you started this whole episode talking about general teaching online. Mm -hmm. I'm titling this episode "Online Teacher Chad." Oh, In, okay. Do you know why I'm? Do you know why I'm titling it "Online Teacher Chad"? Why is that? Because I'm an online teacher. Be yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Very good. I mean, you. That was, that was I asked you, then you Ooh. asked back. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you just seem a little nervous because <laughs> I'm an online teacher. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right, Jerry. That's right. Uh, yes, it's because you're an online teacher, and also because. Uh, I believe I remember you telling me last episode that when you teach online, you tend you have a background that says backdrop, "teacher yep. Chad." I do, yeah. or a backdrop. Excuse me. I, how dare I? Mm. There we go. Perfect. Boom. Perfect. Well, is that all you have up behind you when you teach? So this is perfect. Oh wow. <laughs> Can I put this up like this? We'll I'm see. I'm falling in love right now. This is amazing. <laughs> All right. There we go. A little, little off kilter, way off kilter, but hey. That's good, though. That's good. 
Yeah. So what, how do you? So what I put up though for our listeners out there, not the ones watching on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> is a, a little little piece of paper that says "Teacher Chad" and then a, a picture of the United States, a map of the United States. Now I'm glad you do have this. It's good to that. It's good to know that you teach the same student because I want. Because, uh, um, but I, how do you how do you point out things on this map? Like from I mean, here, I, I don't. I don't. It's more oh, of just oh, like okay, a background okay. thingy. My I my gotcha. main my main thing, Jared, which is one thing that I think every online teacher needs, is a small yes. whiteboard. A small whiteboard mm-hmm. with a couple different color markers. I got, I think, six or seven different colors, a little eraser on there. That is super helpful to draw things, spell out words, uh, give yes. sentences. You can, you know, it's like a little blackboard, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but the, That's exactly what it is. But the key is that, <laughs> that is true. The key <laughs> but it's white. Is, is to figure <laughs> out... Uh, is to figure out how to do it so your students can see it clearly. Because if you right. don't have it in the right spot and if the camera lens doesn't focus, your students won't see it clearly. So, yeah. Is it... Uh, we'll get back to some of these props. I have. Uh, is, is it difficult to establish a rapport with these little kids? No, not at all. Not one bit. Also, another thing, speaking of props that Jared mentioned, I'm showing these to Jared because I have this stuff on my table. I was teaching a lesson last night. I also have uh, some various flashcards. So alphabet flashcards, numbers, first words, and colors and shapes. Uh, So flashcards... What's the time difference between here and Russia? 15 hours. So when you teach at night, it's morning for them. Correct. Yeah, when I teach teach at 9 p.m., it's usually noon. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just, just need to get some perspective on this in my you're head. Good. No oh. worries. So back to what you're saying about though, your... I will say this, though, about online teaching. Unless you are an actual school district, like a public school teacher who has moved online or a university professor who has moved online, if you're doing online, like private consulting work online or private teaching online, uh, depending on where your students are based, you may have some really quirky hours. Uh, so, you know, I my lessons are usually... Mm. 9 and 10 p.m. and then uh uh 5 to 7 a.m. around that ballpark region are usually when my classes Hmm. are sure okay okay so what you go please go back to i want to hear more about some of these materials that you were talking about the the props okay so like i said i have flashcards flashcards are great because they're usually just big enough where you can hold them up to the webcam on your laptop and show them to the students. So you can do these to test their vocabulary, to review vocabulary, uh, pronunciation, speaking, all sorts of different stuff. Um, So those are great. And then I think you're going to get a kick out of this, Jared. My last prop that I have are finger puppets. (laughs) So I have like this. Uh, Is that like a Bob the Builder Builder looking guy? Yeah, he's like a construction guy. A knockoff Bob the Builder. And then the company does not admit to being called Bob a Bob the Builder knockoff. And then I can turn it though. Oh, it's the same one. And then I got like a just a normal normal dude wearing a baseball hat. Hey Jared, what's up? Okay. Um, <laughs> so so there you go. <laughs> Have you had this puppet or did you buy it specifically for these purposes? Bought them for these purposes. And the reason why okay. I have puppets, Jared, I'm not a crazy person, I promise. I haven't gone insane yet on the quarantine. The reason is, is that you can use puppets to model. So the one thing that's difficult about online teaching versus in-person teaching is that in-person teaching, you have a classroom full of students You can have do stuff. You know, you can have them Mm -hmm. have a discussion. You can have them do a presentation. When you're online, it's not really ideal to have your students do do a lot of that stuff. Um, You know, I I would suggest if you can, if it's a presentation, have them do a video and have them upload it so other people can watch it at their own time. So anyways, though, the reason with these puppets is you can model. So you can have a conversation. So maybe I'm giving Jared a... uh, I don't know, a Chinese lesson, and I'm trying to teach Jared the numbers, and Jared's having difficulty, um, then I could use I could use the puppet to model it, and you can kind of have fun with it. You know, my students are aged 10 to uh, 13 years old, so they're still kids. So they still, I think, appreciate and enjoy goofy little things like hand puppets when you use a funny voice or something. Uh, you don't think so? You're going to tell me a 13-year-old gets a kick out of a hand puppet? I mean, I got one laugh in one of my previous lessons. 
All right. All right. <laughs> I mean, I'd laugh too, but I feel like I'd be laughing at you. Reasons. But maybe that's uh, my maybe. problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe I'm the problem. Actually, You'd I'm definitely the problem. You'd be laughing at me anyway, Jared. Let's be honest. <laughs> Regardless what I do. Maybe he's laughing. He's like, does he actually think that this is getting me? But then it really maybe. is. Um, maybe. That's the trick right there. <laughs> <laughs> so is it a is it a challenge to get a captive audience out of these people? Really depends on the students. Um, I will say this, though. At least if you're teaching kids, it is helpful, believe it or not, to have the parents sit near the children because at least what I've seen, it keeps the kids a bit more focused. Um, mm. But, I mean, keeping their attention. I mean, look, that's why I have something ridiculous like these goofy little puppets is to keep their right. attention. Because, I you mean... You have to make it like a YouTube show for them. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, You're a, a live bit. YouTube show. I mean, you should see you should see a lot of these online companies. Dude. There's also... What? Now, I know your lazy ass would never do this, but... Um, and I would do it. I would do it with you if you were if if I wouldn't possibly infect you. You should put lessons online, English lessons for kids English online lessons. on YouTube. I've I've thought about it, but there's already so many people. Mm. I know you knew I was going to say that, but yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, you're right. <laughs> but why do we do this podcast? Because <laughs> well, I enjoy doing the podcast with you. Maybe I would enjoy doing the lessons. Yeah. It's a lot of work, though, to do the lessons. And yeah, I don't know. I think the it. only way I could justify it is if there was something that I wanted to teach and I went online mm-hmm. and I couldn't find it. I feel like that the, well, that's always the mother of necessity. You know, that's when I've you figured out some, maybe some, mm-hmm. some, some trick... Uh, right. Maybe it's like like you found some personal tricks to ways for kids to learn through right. like online, where it's like, oh, no one. I found the ways to keep people captivated. You know. Right. Right. But there, there's you only one way to find like out. You, this know, you have to try for it out. 45 minutes, and they're captivated. Or what you could do is you could do like they do in those videos and make it like an ASMR video. <laughs> I, I need to turn up. I need to have, turn up my. Vo- I'm not going to make have an some ASMR like waterfall video, but... like background <laughs> music. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but there is there is something about keeping keeping your students <laughs> entertained. There is this term, Jared, called edutainment, and I think a mm. lot of online teachers, especially with young kids, they do kind of have to be edutainers because uh, I mean, look, I I wouldn't enjoy being. 10 years old and sitting on a computer and having someone try to teach me like i don't know like russian grammar like as a kid i wouldn't Mm -hmm. enjoy that i would enjoy you like playing games or drawing pictures or you know stuff like that that's a lot more fun than just and these yeah and these kids and everyone these kids me too we're all used to staring at youtube all day anyway True. So I think if you can make it sort of like a YouTube video, it, it helps it helps them feel like they're not being taught but they're watching entertainment. Right. You know, maybe they don't even realize it's live. You know, maybe half the kids that watch Dora the Explorer thinks think that's live. Think think she's actually talking right. to them. Wait, she isn't. You know those shows. Wait, what? <laughs> oh shit! Spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, we're gonna we'll cut that out. <laughs> I will say though, I've been really impressed with the kids I've worked with so far. They've been really great. Um, but I would say you definitely have to be prepared. Um, I would also say less is more with online teaching. Um, it's good to do more repetition, really have a lot of practice, Mm. uh, you know, on whatever your focus is for that lesson. Um, I just know as a teacher in general, I tend to over plan and online, it takes longer to do anything. I think just because there is this barrier that we're not 100% used to yet, I think in maybe five to 10 years when people have taken a lot of online classes and taught a lot, uh, it will be a lot different. But now, at least for me, there's still a bit of a barrier. Do you, um, do you, uh, make it interest? Do you, do you find it interesting? Do you enjoy it? I do actually. I have a lot of fun with it. it. Um, I will say though, online lessons to me do seem to go a bit slower than lessons in person. But I think that's also because progress. You mean? No, no, no. I just mean the 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 hour. It seems like it takes longer, and I think Mm. it's because you are doing a lot more. Especially for me right now, my online teaching, it's all one on one. So it's all just the student and I. Whereas when you teach a normal class, you have what 
anywhere from 10 to 30, 40, 50 students, depending on how large your classes are. Um, and so then you're doing more facilitating. With online teaching, you are doing a lot more instruction, a lot of modeling. And that's the other thing that's important too, Jared, is uh, this thing that we call TPR. Do you remember? I think I explained what TPR was to you a long, long, long time ago. Um, is the R repeat? No. R is response. Response. Uh, I don't know. It's I have called no total idea. Total physical practice. response. Oh, I got and total, so, right? You did. Somehow. Uh, total physical response is basically you do something with your body uh, mm-hmm. and the students do it or you tell your students to do something and they do something with their body. So the act of you doing something with your body, clapping your hands or standing mm. up or sitting down will help you remember the words and stuff like that, right? Like, like if you're teaching students... Um, For example, syllable stress. In English, we have words like project and project, right? So depending Mm -hmm. on which syllable you stress, it will be a different word. Um, And so you can do that by clapping. There's a lot of different ways. You can have them use their hands, things like that. Project. Exactly, exactly. See, Jared, you're learning. See? So um, (laughs) yeah. So TPR, (laughs) it's it's really important. The other thing is, too, is figuring out basic TPR, like – uh, when I have my students say something, especially the younger kids, what a lot of children will do is what what we call they'll parrot you. Basically, it just means they repeat mm-hmm. what you say. So if I say to you, Jared, I say, uh, Jared, say apple. You'll say, say apple. Well, you won't because you're not a child, but you'll say, say apple, <laughs> right? Um, and then I and so they're just repeating what you say. So then you need mm-hmm. to do it in a way so you. Ask them a question, and if they're not sure what to do, then you can say, can you say Apple? And then what I do, which is what most online teachers do that I've seen, is you kind of hold your hand to your ear, kind of tilt your head towards the screen um, so your students can see that you're like, like I'm listening, like you need to say. This right? is very Dora the Explorer. It is. Dude, but it I- has to be <laughs> like that. Oh, I wish I could see this. Yeah, you have to give those those cues. And you sort of have to I mean, exaggerate Jared, the cues. We could we could do a tiny little two minute demo lesson if you want. I can share my screen with you. Uh, sure. Yeah, you let's want, do you it. You want to give it a try? Why not? All right. All right. All right. Hold up. Let me let me get my PowerPoint open. Uh, I'll give you my lesson one, Jared, and we'll go with. Just uh, so you know, people will see this. So be careful of what you have up on your screen when you share this. I'm not worried. On YouTube, you'll you'll be able to see this. Yeah, I don't know what you have up in the background. You freak. all right all right right. one second buddy all right so let me uh i'm gonna i'm gonna all right i'm gonna go to so for a lot of my students this week it was my first lesson with them so i Mm -hmm. am going to go over some of the goals that i had for my classes with uh these wonderful kids jared and then we're gonna i want you to pretend that you are a 12 year old boy who doesn't speak english okay Oh, right. okay, well. Oh, now, Jared, question um, for you. Is there a way... Can you share the screen while recording? Um, I see don't happens. see it. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. I found it. Found it. All right. Where? Where is it? Turn. It was in a oh, different spot it? than okay. usual. I found it. All right. So can Ooh. you see this, Jared? The lesson yes. goals? All yes. right. All right. So hello, Jared. Today, we are going to learn some new words, and these are our goals for today. So we are going to learn an English idiom, which if you're curious, Jared, the idiom was the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And Um, untranslatable. This is great. It is. It is. So we already learned our English idiom. So now we're going to practice vocabulary, and I hope you will speak a lot of English. Are you ready? You betcha. All right. So Jared, can you tell me what letter is this? Uh, A. Good. And what is this? Uh, apple, apple, great apple. job, Jared. Apple, good. And Jared, what other words start with a? Can you say a word that starts with a? Agony. <laughs> good, Jared. <laughs> One more word, please. Antithesis. Wonderful. What Very letter is this, boy. Jared? Uh, b- D, not D, b- b- uh, B, 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 great job. And what are these? 
Balloons. Balloons. Great job. Wonderful. And Jared, what other words begin with B? Um, Blue. Great. One more word. Uh, Ball sack. (laughs) Okay. Anyways... (laughs) I think I think you and the listeners get <laughs> the point, Let's not get to Jared. see. I don't, <laughs> yeah, we're not. So I had them go through the alphabet. Uh, then uh, then we we'll do this as well, Jared. We'll do this real okay. quick. Um, so Jared, now we will play a game. I will give you a category, and I want you to say three words uh, that fit in this category. For example, the category is food, and you could say pizza ice cream and apples what are three foods jared rutabaga celery bacon great and jared what food do you like to eat um spaghetti nice very good now jared can you name three colors cyan chartreuse magenta Perfect. Okay. So, anyways, that's that's <laughs> what I was doing with the during the first be in the advanced lesson. class. You should be. Oh, that is for I don't sure. like this one bit. Yeah, let's stop that. <laughs> <laughs> that was like an inception of myself. Uh, right. <laughs> no kidding. But yeah. So, anyways, so um, there's a lot of different TPR you can do, like the, the kind of hands up like this after you ask a question. Mm-hmm. Um, you could scratch your head for a question too. I wow. will like touch my head if I go think. You know, mm-hmm. if, if I know they're struggling, I go. It's okay, think. You know, and give well, them. Some then more time. I think I can already see a problem with me in this situation, and it's mm-hmm. a problem you have to get over. You can't have this, but you have to be able to get a little animated. You know, you're, oh, you're definitely you're 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 almost you're almost playing a character of a of like a teacher a little bit <laughs> edutainment my man yeah. yeah did you hear yeah. the tone of my voice changed everything right it's completely I, yeah. different yeah mm-hmm. i did, did like feel the, a little uh, the condescending? ear move <laughs> um no because i get it Right. Because I get it. If you if, if we weren't if we weren't doing a little bit there, and you were just talking to me like that, I, I'd be like, "All right, right, you have to stop that right. now, or else I'm gonna no kidding. punch you through this computer <laughs> no screen." Well, it's it's kind of it's kind of like how people say, uh, you know, you have your like retail voice or your customer service yeah. voice. Mm-hmm. I think it's kind of the same with teaching because for me, one, I have to a lot of times simplify what I say. One thing I struggle with personally as a teacher, especially an online teacher, is reducing teacher talk. Now, I think a lot of parents, they like to hear the teacher talk because they think, mm. oh, my, my kid's hearing a native speaker speak a lot. This we're is paying, good. We're paying for the teacher to teach. <laughs> right. Which, which I understand that. But at the same time, if your child or your student really wants to improve, you have to have them do a lot of speaking. Um, mm-hmm. So it's important to keep it simple, keep it short, um, yeah. be very clear. And that's the thing with online teaching is it's, it can be a bit more vague and there's more ambiguity just because of the environment. You're not there where, you know, unless it's a one-on-one direct session, if we're talking about remote online teaching for a school or university, which I've also done, um, it's much different because you are kind of on the clock 24 seven. Whereas when you do a private session with a student, you have that hour and then you're done. So it's yes. a very different type of environment. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of teachers who taught in person are having some difficulties adjusting to constantly having to check their email. Not that they already don't, because I'm sure they did when they were teaching. But when you're in the act of teaching a class, you can't be scrolling through your emails all the time. There's just not time. You're managing the sure. your classroom. Whereas when you're online, you know, that learner management system is your quote unquote classroom. And a learner management system is something like Blackboard. Um, D2 Trello L is what they use. Could you use uh, Trello? I think in theory you probably could actually. Well, uh, mm. uh, yes and no. You would have to use something else. Usually most learner management management systems, Jared, have a place where students can upload documents and stuff like that. Um, uh. And, and sure. share videos and things like that, um, you know. Um, but one of the big differences as well with online teaching is trying to build that closeness and that community through the separation of a computer screen, which can be pretty difficult. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Do you think that having this podcast helps or no, because you're still just talking to me 100%. when you do this? No, 100%. It okay. Well, it's, it's really funny. Um, when I did, oh, I forget which company uh, I interviewed with. I interviewed with a company um, to teach uh, English online, and they were super oh, I know impressed. The company, but I won't say it. <laughs> they were super <laughs> impressed that I had a, a, an actual microphone and not like a, a mm, mic and a headset, mm-hmm. which I also have. Yeah. I, I actually now just use the mic and the headset, but I was using my podcasting gear because I know the audio is crisp and clear, and it's going to be sharp. Um, yeah. And there's not a ton of background noise with these microphones. So um, so I think the podcast has definitely helped. Um, when, I I was in, mm-hmm. when I was in Philadelphia and I was doing interviews for my job, for my next job, I, I did a few Skype interviews and I asked my parents, I was like, I can deliver like better audio than the uh, audio that would blow these people's mind. Should I do it or right. does it look weird do it. to have like did a real... Well, th- no, I didn't do it. No. Oh, you should. Well, I just used my computer matter, with, but... in, a, in an echoey room, something I would um, probably never oh, find bro, acceptable. I, c- I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. Yeah. I think I've just gotten like, so used to it. It just felt weird. I don't want to. I don't want them to ask me why. Like, oh, I have a podcast because you are looking for jobs where having right. this podcast might actually be beneficial. Like at your China job, they were they wanted you to uh, post about it and talk about it. Right. Um, right. I don't really have that kind of job. And if I go to Russia, <laughs> nobody cares. Come September, my job. <laughs> I'll also be doing that as well. Um, yes. We'll, we'll see. We'll see with that. I'm fingers crossed. I really, really hope so. Uh, but yeah. So I found. I found some online te- teaching chips, and I just want to ask you about some Great. of them because Great. some of them I uh, like for the for this one I, I you mentioned last episode, and I want to get your mm-hmm. opinion on this again because I don't know if we actually talked about it too much. Okay. Uh, the first online tip that I found from this website is teach on a website that has its own materials. I would say that is a big plus if you can do that because I develop all the materials at least for my private students, um, and. I try to, for every hour lesson I have, or academic hour, so every 45-minute lesson I have, I try to allocate 20 to 25 minutes in prep time. I could spend way more mm-hmm. time than that, but I really... What it really comes down to, Jared, a good online lesson... Also, they're children. Yes. I mean, you're not... But you could spend not, a lot of... You could spend an over an hour just doing a PowerPoint, like coming up with sure. the transitions and all that fancy stuff, you know, animations <laughs> and sounds and all sorts of stuff. Um, sure. But, you know, so it is a, it's a big time saver. But here's the thing. If you work for a company where you have to use their own materials, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's great because you don't have to waste your time prepping for the classes. It's bad, though, if it's not great material. Just because mm-hmm. you have materials provided for you doesn't mean they're good. And mm-hmm. maybe they're not suited to the skill level of the student or you just aren't very accustomed to teaching using that curriculum or what, you know, it really depends. Um, I personally, though, I think it's it's good to supplement any um, any materials that a company will give you um, and kind of put your own spin on it because that's the beauty of you as a teacher is being unique to yourself. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I, I imagine it, could, it would be theoretically easier... As also to obviously have curriculum and and course courses already set up for you, mm-hmm. but um, it could also be a crutch where it could also potentially turn the job extremely boring if you just turn into like the guy from Ferris Bueller. Exactly. That, uh, um, okay. Um, do you so, back up? Do you do? Are you concerned about backing up your materials? I, I haven't backed up. Yeah, I have a couple different okay. places where if, mm-hmm. if if my God forbid if my laptop did crash, I would be able to get the materials no problem. I do want to say though, Jared, I want to share at least my tips for what Please. makes a great online teacher. Uh, just because yeah, I did say way that more at the top important. of the show, and this is gotta, online teacher Chad. That's the episode, right? Right. Uh, so coming from online teacher Chad, these are my tips for all of you out there interested in getting in the online teaching game um, and what is important. Um, I think number one, Jared. Uh, goes without saying, technology skills. If you can't work a laptop, you can't 
uh, you can't be an, a good online teacher. I would say if you're doing your own lesson, <laughs> I, I knew you were going to say that, but I don't care. I don't care. Um, you need to have some level of competence with uh, some type of video conferencing sure. software. So mm-hmm. Skype, Zoom. Have you used Zoom before, Jared? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're, we used it for you're this not, pod one you're time. Not gonna believe, you're not going to believe this. Oh, no, this. we didn't. We didn't. I have used we it. We didn't. I've um, used it. I, I may, it must have been work then that I've used it at. I've used Zoom with teaching online for German classes. And let me tell you, buddy, I at one point was quite the Zoom wizard because I taught mm. for you know an entire summer using Zoom. I was doing mm-hmm. it a lot. Um, and Zoom, I really like Zoom. Personally, I think it's a good platform. There's a lot of great tools built in. Uh, I use Skype with my private students right now, and Skype works great. Um, I usually just have a pre-shared PowerPoint. What's nice with a lot of these companies out there like English First, EF, or VipKid, or um, GoGoKid, there's tons and tons of them. Uh, Dada ABC, Say ABC, there's tons of them. Wow. Um, lots and lots of them. Uh, I actually have a list somewhere on my computer, Jared, of a list of all of them, just because when I lost my job, I went into full panic mode in the very beginning um, and just yeah, it makes sense. Yep, listed all the opportunities for online teaching. I mean, you should still kind of be in panic mode. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm in panic mode for different reasons, Jared. That's that's the key here. Online teaching has given me a little tiny piece of sanity. Maybe I would have gone yes. insane right now if I haven't been online teaching, Jared. I can imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it gives you some structure in your some exactly classical work exactly life so balance anyways, structure. So as I said, so back to tips. So number one is obviously some technological competence. Um, mm-hmm. I have some. J- Jared won't agree with me, but I do have some. No, 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 no. But um, I, I'm sure you have enough to handle Zoom and uh, yes, and Skype. Number, I, number I, I, two, I'm, number two, Jared is patience. With online teaching, you mm. have to learn how to. I think it's like this too in person teaching as well. But learn how to embrace the the silences, and sometimes it will be awkward. Sometimes the technology the technology will be. Uh, a little slow, or you might look pixelated or, or freeze, or they might freeze. So you have to be patient and roll with the punches. Also, it's really, really important as an online teacher to be very encouraging. Um, be, and, and the other thing is too, Jared, is as an online teacher, uh, and I'm not very good at this, but I have some friends who, who have taught online who are great at this. And this sounds really corny and stupid, but when you teach online, you really need to smile almost all the time. Because if you think about it, yeah, when you have a student and you're teaching a student, and if you're not smiling, you just kind of look like this. I guess I'm going to try to do it, <laughs> where you're just bored. You I look hope Jared, angry slash bored. Yeah. <laughs> I hope Jared will screenshot that and put it on our Instagram um, at some point <laughs> because uh, uh, that's that's what you get if you are listening and it's normal to have a in a regular conversation that's usually kind of how we listen right generally Mm -hmm. we don't have an ear to ear smile on our face when we're listening in a regular because you can tell when someone's engaged and i mean it goes along with it goes along with the exaggerated shrugging that you have to do or the putting your hand up to your ear it's all sort of it's it's a performance to a certain Mm -hmm. extent and it has to be to especially when you're dealing with children because you know children have short attention spans. Exactly. I have short attention spans. Yeah. And that leads me to my last tip for online teachers. I could give a slew more, but I think these are like the top four most important things. Last one, Jared, is be ready to be flexible and adaptable. Because teaching mm. online, you might have one lesson plan. I had a lesson plan set up for a student of mine, and then I realized the lesson was way below their level. Uh, so it was too easy. Oh. I will say this. It's a lot easier generally to bring the level up then bring the level back sure. down, at least in my own teaching experience. Um, but be ready for that, especially uh, last week. You know, th- that was my first lesson with a lot of these students. So, mm, you know, we did a lot of stuff at. just to see what level they were at. Exactly. Um, so, so be adaptable. Okay. Those are great tips. Those are, I, I can definitely imagine you being a great online teacher, Chad. Well, thank and, you. And um, try my best. Let me ask you this. Um, we, we talked for a hot sec about how in these times, especially now that you're back from China because of uh, this virus, um, having this job leaves you with a certain amount of sanity, you know, gives mm-hmm. you some structure in your life, gives you that work-life balance that uh, I think most people need to some extent. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, uh, you're planning on going to Russia come September. 
but obviously that's that's up in the air at this point. Sure. Who knows where society yep. will be at that point? Is online teaching, Chad, a viable uh, career path? Could you? Could you? If if some if you weren't able to go to um, to Russia when you were planning on it, could you sustain yourself? And not living with your parents, I mean. Mm-hmm. Could you get your yeah. own place? And I think you could, but it wouldn't be easy. I think if you You're could... You're not living comfortably. If you, if you could find a full-time teaching job, if, if, you know, if you're still trying to stay in the field of teaching, uh, generally in-person, face-to-face teaching gigs pay a lot more, especially through university. If you have your master's and you can find a job, um, that will be difficult, though, I think, in the coming year to two years, maybe depending on the backlash of everything that's been happening now. Um, But I think if you do it privately and you get enough students, most definitely. Um, Because you can set your own price. So if you can uh, somehow uh, curate a reputation Mm -hmm. and get your own customer base, then, of course, the sky's the Mm -hmm. limit at that point. Well, and see, that's the thing. I'd like to eventually break into the market in China, maybe as a private teacher, because I've been talking to some of my friends uh, back in China, and I mean, you can charge an, an exorbitant amount of money if you're teaching anything that's like college prep based. Um, mm-hmm. uh, also, if you're teaching like um, speaking for academic purposes or what have you, um, if you're teaching for testing stuff. I had a friend who uh, she's Polish. Uh, but lived in England, and and she has no accent at all whatsoever when she speaks English. Um, Not that Mm -hmm. it matters one way or another, but for her, she could market herself as a native speaker because, in my opinion, she basically is. I know what you mean. I have Um, have friends like that when I lived in Germany. And uh, and she told me she was making anywhere from 100 to 150 U.S. dollars an hour doing uh, (sighs) stuff for... uh, It's like a lawyer. (laughs) Right, for TEFL prep, uh, IELTS prep. Um, those types of tests. Right. Um, so, so if yeah. you can fill up your calendar with that, you can definitely live off Make of that. Make a comfortable living. But yeah. I mean, that sounds like, that might sound like the dream, especially since then you could theoretically, you know, live wherever you want. You could be on your own schedule and you wouldn't be stuck down somewhere. Right. But, um, I mean, we, we have a podcast here. We know how hard it is to amass an audience to to get to a point where you could even demand rates like that. So I so it is. Right. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is. I, I could imagine tough and takes time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it, um, it can take quite a while. That is for sure. Real quick, mm-hmm. real quick. I want I want to touch on. Uh, I mean, part of the reason why this episode came up is obviously because you're online teacher Chad. Obviously, the other part of this re- the other part yep. of the reason why this episode came up is because now, uh, essentially, all the schools in the United States, college, high school, and many other have, countries as well. Yeah, many other countries as well have at least for the remainder of this school year, which for the most for most people ends in May or June ish, have transitioned to uh, online teaching. Yep. Um, I I I wonder how that's going to be for all these teachers who um are not tradition or are not used to teaching online, who are might be even pretty inept when it comes to technology. Uh, right. How they are how they would cope with it, and how you think they would cope with it as someone that's worked in uh. Well, he, so here's uh, you know, so here's the thing, education. Jared. Right. So here here's the thing. That's a great point. Um. I think there's a lot of especially older teachers, uh, not trying to be ageist here, but there are definitely a lot of old, older teachers who just aren't accustomed to the technology. Um, I saw, now this is meme news, Jared. L- little warning here, meme news. But I saw a meme <laughs> Slipping that on gator piss. Somebody's like 74-year-old science teacher uh, pre-recorded all the rest of the lessons for the semester in the classroom um, because hmm. he didn't feel com- comfortable uh, using Zoom. Uh, and I don't know if it was a high school teacher or a professor. I'm not really sure. Um, but either way, at the end and of the day, it doesn't works, really it matter. Uh, exactly. But that's the other thing, too, is that I think it's important to be aware of the different types of online teaching. Um, and we could also do an episode on that, Jerry. That might be kind of fun. Uh, talking about the differences between synchronous and asynchronous online classes. Do you know, do you know what, what that, that means? means. Okay. No. So synchronous would mean that you do things at the same time. So you have a lecture that everyone attends at the same time. 
Asynchronous means I upload a lecture that's me doing mm. a voiceover of a PowerPoint or something, uh, or a video of me doing my interpretive dance to explain uh, photosynthesis to you, <laughs> and then you watch or your it. Puppet and you just show. Do- Oh, exactly, or a puppet show. Um, <laughs> and so you do all those things. So asynchronous is basically you can do things at a different time. Where synchronous, sure. you have to do everything at the same time. Um, and both of them have See, their pros and cons. Sure. That's part of it that wasn't even the first part that crossed my mind. The mm-hmm. first part that crossed my mind was, uh, are they switching to a situation where there's no ability to respond do they have technology where there's like a virtual hand raising that you can do no uh it de- it depends on the learning management system so it really really depends well that's the thing mm-hmm. uh, sure but we're talking about schools that for the most part a lot of the some schools are ahead of the game some schools out there yep. have had online teaching programs or could work through colleges to have a pretty good online teaching software correct but there are i would imagine the majority of schools are just don't have that and i wonder right right there what is they, definitely like, a like, lack of support I'm about. for teachers and, and and are are they just are they just are, are a lot of schools just gonna have to forego the response system, or um, right? What well, th- or I don't know. I don't know. I've from what I've heard, and I am a part of a very large Facebook group called the Online Learning Collective. Uh, shout out to the Online Learning Collective. It's great. There's a lot of support, and you know, teachers who have been moving everything online, they can ask questions about different learning management systems, and you know, which you know which app to use for screen sharing and screen recording stuff like that um but i think that does show that a lot of schools are dropping the ball in the states and not providing teachers with appropriate training to do these things um and i think Mm -hmm. if you're going to expect the teachers to continue to teach i think from a a moral (laughs) standpoint you should be giving them training and necessary support now it's hard to say because i'm a you know i'm an independent contractor basically so i don't work for any specific school so it's very different um, for me, and right your now. job is online teaching, right? Like you're not, you weren't forced. I didn't into sign a, up. Right. To, I didn't to, sign up as a, a pandemic. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, although I happily would have continued teaching classes at my university if I would have been allowed to, uh, but that's another story for another time. Um, but you know, Jared, sure. Of course. One thing that I think all online teachers and online students need uh, is some music to relax in their downtime uh, between their chaotic mm-hmm. classes, and we got a mm-hmm. banger for you all today by a French artist mm-hmm. named Koba Lad. The song is called Guedro. What are your thoughts on it, Jared? French is... I, uh, I, I, you, I, I'm guessing you you might have seen this guy on Colors at some point. Yep. I don't know yep. if he was fresh yep. on Colors, but I'm sure it seems like you've been going through Colors back catalog. I have been. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. the only reason I <laughs> yeah. know that is because you also I've been, been going through Colors yeah. back catalog. Now, I haven't heard that song specifically, but the reason I... I, I I could feel it had a colors vibe because I love uh I love French being applied to hip hop. It works very well. I mean French is a beautiful oh, language in general. Does. Yeah. But but it's very here's a ten dollar word, malif oh, damn it, I can never pronounce <laughs> it. Very mellifluous uh uh-huh. the French Malifluous, language. Yeah. And it uh it, it and it works very well when when speaking quickly because it doesn't right. it in does. some languages it smooth in it some flows. languages now i hate to call out but like when we were talking about dutch whenever mm. like like when we're, that, that singer that that we had as a song of a pot a while ago she was a very beautiful singer but like the in a dutch weird way sound those, made it yeah this, different whenever like there mean. was those harsh tones and those harsh right. like, noises it kind of hey, took me out for a sec it, it took no, me no it took me out for a sec but the, right. you don't have any of those interruptions in French, and right. um, it just it, it it's it's so well applied to so many languages. How, how would you or songs? How would you categorize this song? Is it like trap? What? I'm the I yeah, am. I'd not... say it's like a like a trappy. I, I'm not I'm not up on the new kid hip hop either. I don't know. The <laughs> the uh, the last hip hop album I listened to came out was was by like a forty year old dude. But yeah, I'd say like a trappy hip hop, just just like pop hip hop. It's just like the okay. hip hop of today. So that's right. why I call it pop hip hop. Right. But yeah, it's definitely like, an it reminds interesting me of song. like future or something like that. You right. know? Oh, for sure, for sure. 
And whatever yeah. he is, I don't know. I don't listen to Future. Okay. <laughs> there we go. But whatever but yeah, that so is, check it, kind of that Check vibe. it out. Uh, yeah. Uh, Koba Lad. You betcha. Wadro. Check it out. Have, our, uh, I, mm-hmm. so, go ahead. No, yeah. Check it out on our... Uh, yeah. Check it out on all the places. The, mm-hmm. I, I just have this this drop here, and it's been killing me. I have no idea what it is, and I need to know. Milda Moses. Oh. oh, there we go. Nice. I haven't used that one nice. in a long time. <laughs> well, Jared, it, speaking of foreign words... Uh, I think it's yes. time for our foreign words of the pod. And mine, I'm, still, I'm still learning Russian. And mine for today is uh, terpinya. And terpinya means patience, which I think is a key mm. to being an online teacher. Oh. You've got to be patient. It's a, not only a key to being an online teacher, it's very key I also, I think, to this, uh, to this co- self-quarantine time True. that we're living Good in. Good point. It has definitely required a lot of patience of me and my housemate. I believe it. How are you and your parents getting along? Is it starting good. to get a little annoying? So far, so good. Is your mom still going to work? Nope. She's back home now. Oh, right. There's a, yep. Also, there's a stay at home. So, yeah. yeah. For no, anything she, non-essential. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Does she work from home? Yeah, she works from home. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. okay. Yep, she's been working from home for a while now. But, yeah. But, anyways, to all of our people out there thinking about going into online teaching or the teachers who are making the transition... Um, it is a great way to find some work, um, but it does take, uh, there is a learning curve trying to get used to the technology, uh, learning mm-hmm. how to do the total physical response, the, the kind of body movements and stuff for teaching. Um, and there's a lot of different software and stuff you have to deal with and learn as well. But um, I think I think it is worth taking the time to learn it and online teaching can be very rewarding and a lot of fun. And my tips for all of you out there who are thinking of teaching online or are currently teaching online, uh, get used to your technology, try it out, play with it, uh, be patient, and be adaptable. It's very, very important to have all those attributes or characteristics. We, we recently had an episode on uh, jobs that allow you to travel. This mm-hmm. definitely seems like one that definitely could allow you to be very mobile. Yes and no, Jared. So it's interesting you mentioned that, and I'm glad you did. There are uh, certain online English teaching companies that only allow you to work from United States or Canada or UK mm. or Australia. Like a tax thing, maybe? Probably. Uh, and then there are other ones that allow you to work wherever. So make sure mm. to ask that early on in the stages. Most online teaching gigs as well, there will be they a lengthy onboarding process. Um, your, your IP address, probably. So you'd have yeah. to use a VPN and hope that the connection's good. Yeah, I would just say, just do yeah. the right thing. And if they only allow you to work in the states, don't take that job if you're trying to travel. Because there are companies sure. that offer for for relatively the same pay for you to travel. Uh, so, anyways, yeah. we hope this episode was helpful for all of you who wanted to get perspective into what it's like to be an online teacher and what skills you need. Yeah, uh, we could have covered a lot more, but I think we definitely scratched a little bit more than the surface. So we hope you've learned something from today's episode about online teaching and from online teacher Chad. So I hope you've enjoyed. And we thank you all so much for your support. Uh, I think we're up to probably over 25 different countries now. Am I wrong, Jared? Uh, probably not. So it's, no, it's, no, okay. I don't. I don't keep counting. I mean, I, no, here. you're probably no, no. I mean, you're probably not wrong. Is what I meant to say. Ah, gotcha. I just, okay. I just, I just don't keep counting like that. That's fair. <laughs> Anyways, we so appreciate all give you of you from everywhere for your support. Stay happy, stay healthy. Uh, now, if you're stuck at home, take the time to do some learning. If you need some lessons, let you us betcha. know at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. And Teacher Chad is here for you. Um, or, or if you have some untranslatables you want to send our way as well, that is untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Check out our YouTube channel, Untranslatable Podcast for Song of the Pod. Um, and all sorts of uh, beautiful episodes edited by my man Jared. So check that out. Lastly, um, take a look at our Twitter, Untranslatable One, the number one. And please, five star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. Y'all Let us know how we can make this podcast better for you. So, as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, Yakuyame, muchas gracias, shisha, and dosvidanya. <laughs>